Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent for the city of New York. Good morning. Okay, so today we're going to call out some names. Call out some names. More people. Okay, first guy. This guy has to resign. This guy is It's amazing that he's, he's even still there. Uh, apparently he is uh, still employed with the Department of Sanitation as the Director of Enforcement. This is Mr. Michael Burke right here. Let's get a good look at his face. Mr. Burke, he is, uh, hides himself out in the Brooklyn zone. I'll put up his contact information right here. Here's his address, his phone number. You can reach out to him. It's up on Flushing Avenue, 5115 or... Okay, so that's Mr. Burke. And what does Mr. Burke do? Mr. Burke is basically in charge of the enforcement division. He is the um, civilian director, right? And he's in charge of uh, this guy, Greenwood. He was in charge of... These two guys are gone. Greenwood and Pepe are, are history. And then there's... Um, okay, below him is also... You have that mosquito. You have Pepe. You have... Uh, you have uh, Pascal. Okay, so these are all the line captains. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at his emails. They've denied that there is a quota. We've already heard the recordings. Uh, it's pretty conclusive. <laughs> You'd have to be, you know, living in a bubble to not have, to not understand what Lieutenant Ortega in his 22-minute secret audio number one, um, I'll put it down below if you haven't heard it. It's down there. You can click on Ortega and you can hear a uh, modus operandi in Ortega, Lieutenant Ortega's own words, that there is a quota. And this kind of confirms it. Here's Burke. We're going to go all the way back to January 7. You see this letter right here. This is um, Mr. Burke addressing the captains. He's also addressing a couple of chiefs uh, in this mix. You see all the people that are, are CC'd in. You see there is uh, Brenton Greenwood. There's Louis Pepe. You'll see... The names um, Christine Pascal. Okay, there's also another. You'll see uh, Carlo Nieves. That's this guy right here, Carlo Nieves, Captain Nieves. Okay, uh, and um, you know basically these are all the people that are receiving this email. What does this email say? This, be this email basically says, what your captains, what you're to do, lieutenants, what you're to do is is block face agents who fail to write under 10 tickets. Now, what is block facing? Block facing, as our uh, good friend uh, Chuck Palumbo, <laughs> informant Palumbo, told us that uh, it block facing is basically where a sergeant takes you out by without a car. You don't have a car. Right? They take away your car. And the, the, the sergeant drops you off on a block, and he sits there and waits till you write 10 tickets. He follows you around and, and basically it's forced labor. It forces you to write 10 tickets and if you don't write the 10 tickets then he'll step out and find the ticket. He'll point it and he'll make you write the ticket and sign your name to that ticket even if you don't agree. Right? So this is block facing. This is punishment. Foot patrol in, 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 in enforcement is punishment. There's no need for it. It's not like traffic tickets where there's you know, traffic violations on every corner. Sometimes you have to hunt around and find the tickets. Okay, so you need a car. So, so, uh, so in the class, I want to point out the three conspirators of, in the class. You have Brenton Greenwood, Christine Pascal, and this guy right here is a new face, Mr. Garnett. Okay, these are three um, obviously African American folks. They they're all from, I believe they all reside out in the same neighborhood in Far Rockaway. They're all um, they're all uh, uh, natives of, I believe, Trinidad. Okay, so they all have the same accent. Uh, again, I, I, you could you could say whatever you want. This is just this is just modus op. This is just metadata. This is just observation. Okay, that, the, that they all seem to have been on the same page. There was clearly a racial turn, ter, ter, racial tone. Um, and uh, here's the class. This is the mix of the class. They prefer under 30, African-American, Hispanic, okay? This is what they went for. Okay, so so uh, you, you move right along and um, you're moving right along. And, you know, and they always said in that class that, that uh, oh, there is no discrimination. There is there's no retaliation. Conti is just a big baby. <laughs> 
He's he's a crybaby. He likes to uh, he likes to cry. He's he, he's not getting his way. He always has to have things his way. He's argumentative and uncooperative. Total total bullshit. Absolute total bullshit. So so I went. Uh, you know I was attacked by this guy, Mr. Peppy, and um, you know basically I went down to EEO, <laughs> Equity Opportunity and Diversity Woman. Her name is Teresa Neal. We already saw. Who she is in video, and uh, she should she just it's total total dereliction of duty that did nothing to interfere. She basically told me after Mr. Pepe attacks me in a boardroom, um, Mr. Why where does Mr. Pepe come in? Mr. Pepe is basically Brenton Greenwood, the captain's right hand man. He's basically the hitman. These two guys tried to write me up. Well, they did. They effectively, what they, they don't actually write you up. What they do is they conspire to write you up, and then they get some, some other supervisor to do it. So the first write-up I received was a, was a conspiracy between these two guys, and they tried to say that I was AWOL, and they tried to say that I failed to follow a direct order. It was all bullshit. It was all documented that I, uh, I had a call, a city call to, to go take another job, and I documented the whole thing, and they turned it into an AWOL, and they lied. And so the whole thing, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a piling on effect. These two guys don't like me, right, for what I believe in, initially was a racial, racially motivated attack. And then Mr. Burke, again, uh, somewhere in that class, I think that I may have talked about the 10-ticket quota. I don't know. I may have said, hey, by the way, you know, 10-ticket quota is illegal. I don't know. I, didn't, I never pushed it. And that, that, that push never happened until I went to... The EEO department sat in front of Teresa Neal, and I talked about it for about two hours. And if you don't, if you don't believe in Miss Neal, we'll we'll roll the tape, okay? And we'll find we we'll, we'll, we know exactly what you said and what was said. Okay, so Miss Neal um, was informed about the quota, and that's when the that's when all the hit pieces, that's when all the quote boom fake. This is when the fake write ups started to come by. But I also want to point out that in these in these um, let's go back to the emails for one second. In the emails, January 7, all the way up to April uh, 5, 2016, you see, um, you you see Burke repeatedly pushing the uh, captains to to get the agents to write tickets, get the agents to write tickets. Now, am I making it up? No, of course not. It's you know, where the the question is the question is if Burke is the top of the food chain. And he see there's also this guy too. Let's bring him into the. Uh, there's also a couple other names. There's, there's, because they're saying what 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 DSNY. I got to tell you guys at, at enforcement what DSNY is saying. We don't know anything about a quota. What quota? I don't know anything about a quota. It must have been enforcement. We never gave them a quota. They they made it up themselves. And so so Burke is basically they're, they're trying to blame Burke, right? But Burke was CCing this guy, Chief Klinger. Now he's on the green side, right? He's a he's a DSNY chief, right? And there's this other guy, Anthony Pompeo, who's also CC'd into all of these communications, right? And then there's this other guy too, whose name just came into the mix. His name is uh, Soraya, Chief Soraya. What the hell? Where the hell is he? I mean, who? The, what? You know, they. You know, he's. Here you see a picture of him right next to Garcia and and uh, I believe that guy's name is Diggins, Deputy Diggins. Okay, so so that's the play. The play is that the school play at DSNY is to is to get the 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 uh, line um, supervisors sergeants to do the dirty work. They're the puppets, as as uh, Sergeant Hampton clearly said in the recording that I'm a puppet. I'm a puppet. We, they just they follow orders, and where are these orders coming from? Now we know it's Amosquita, it's Klingler, it's Garcia, it's Pepe, it's Greenwood, and there's also you know, so 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 here here, Pepe, and then and then of course Amosquita is um, you know is lying in court documents. He's telling he's telling Teresa Neal. That there is no quota. Now I'm I go down to EEO, and she asks me what the problem is, and then I tell her, and then Amosquita comes in and lies his ass off and says that 
I, I, I don't know how to do my job. I, I can't follow orders. He, he repeatedly told me to, to do my job. The job is to write tickets. I wrote tickets. I wrote 10 tickets every day because that's what they told me to do. And now they, you know, this guy goes down there and tells them that it's, it's something totally different, which is a, it's a total, total, you know, lie. But the point is, where is, where is Garcia? Okay. Oh, here's another one. Here's the signatures. Okay. Here's the signatures. These are the people that signed off on it. You see, there's Lieutenant, uh, there's, um, there's, uh, Teresa Neal, you know, signed and, signed and sealed, right? And then there's, uh, Garcia. And then there's this other guy, Robert Orlin. He's the, some other deputy. Okay. So everybody's informed of it. They signed off on my firing, which was based on the fact that I wasn't doing the, the job and was based on the fact that I had complained about the ticket quota. Okay. So, so that's all. I think I got everybody in there. And the, you know, the question is, where's de Blasio, right? Where's de Blasio? Where's Mayor de Blasio on this? Where's Eric Schneiderman? Where's Eric Schneiderman? Where's the, the AG, IG, AG, IG, Schneiderman? Where's this guy? Where's uh, Flaher Fla Flaherty, Mr. Flaherty? Where are you? DOI, Department of Investigations, Mr. Flaherty, where are you? Where's Where's Ibrahim Khan, the Chief of Staff for for Loretta James? Where's Loretta James? Loretta James, the the public advocate of New York, has been informed. Her Chief of Staff is communicating with me. Where the hell are you? Where are Where are these people? This is. This is this is dereliction of duty. This is malfeasance. Now that's where we're, we're heading towards malfeasance, and this was presented to the to the judge. Okay, the, you know, this was presented down on you know, and it's going to be presented to these folks right here at at the appellate division in December, December 2017. We're coming up on it. Division of Department of Sanitation. They're doing everything they can to squeak out of it, to push the date back. But we'll at some point we'll be in court. And we'll be in front of the panel. This is the beautiful indoor part of the court. This is the building outside. Uh, so I guess, you know, we're not trying to make this happen. We're not trying to put anybody in handcuffs here. That's not, I'm not ma malicious. But you guys have to, you have to come clean. You can't just keep saying that, you know, saying and saying and saying that there is no quota, that, that there is no rampant discrimination, that there is no segregated department called enforcement in the Department of Sanitation okay you guys gotta you just have to come clean it's not this is evidence gathering okay it's not gonna go away okay it's not gonna go away you you guys have accused me of everything I'm you could say that I'm the bigot I'm a racist I'm I'm lazy I'm an, I'm maybe I'm an, I'm an informant you, st you still don't know who I am or why you know what what my motivation is but my motivation is is pretty is pretty simple it's justice equality fairness that's all restitution for harm done you guys killed me you guys killed me you killed you killed my whole you know my whole you know plan you know financial depravity poverty you know working with food stamps created family problems that i will never i'm not going to talk about that but you created serious family problems Guys, bad news, man. Guys, bad news. Guys need to come clean.